Hi, John here with Performance Plus Tennis, and in today's lesson, we're going to break down Carlos Alcaraz's incredible forehand and show you the things that you can copy to improve your forehand right away. We all know that Carlos' forehand is really probably the biggest forehand in tennis right now, probably the most feared shot, but really, is his forehand that drastically different than anyone else's? And probably I would say not. I would say that he really just does the fundamentals better. And we're going to go through what those fundamentals are that you can apply to your forehand right away to realize immediate improvement. So the first key concept you want to copy is the grip. So if you're trying to have a big, powerful, versatile topspin forehand, the ideal grip is the semi-western grip. And that's really where the palm of your hand is on the fourth bevel from the top. So we've got a top bevel, we've got the first bevel to the right, we've got the back bevel, and then we've got this fourth bevel underneath where we're going to put our index finger knuckle so we're going to get our palm of our hand slightly underneath that back bevel and this is the semi-western grip this is the grip that Carlos is using it allows him tremendous versatility he can spin the ball uh, as much as he wants from a variety of different contact points that gives him tremendous power and versatility so make sure you're in a semi-western grip if you're looking to have a big powerful topspin forehand the second principle, and you'll see Carlos do this, and you'll see virtually every player on the ATP and WTA tours doing this, is they're getting their non-dominant hand involved in the forehand. So you'll see that Carlos has got both hands on the racket in the ready position, and his first move will take that racket back, and you'll see that he actually gets the left hand beyond the right shoulder. He actually gets it beyond the right shoulder before he releases it. And he uses that left hand to create a unit turn and get the racket set up. And then when he's here, notice how he'll hold it longer than you would think he should. And then the natural instinct is to release and go right into his swing. So it takes the, the, the hesitation out or the thinking out of the shot. So when he gets here, once he releases it, he goes right into his swing. It creates a natural fluid motion. Now, when you're here, you're measuring the timing, measuring the timing. So when he lets it go, the left hand comes out lines the ball up, it moves away quickly, and rotates his body, and right through the shot he goes. So we really want to get this non-dominant hand involved in the forehand as much as possible. So if you're playing as a right-hander and you're thinking that the forehand is just played with the right hand, you really have the wrong idea. Take a careful look at all the things the left hand is doing for Carlos' forehand. The third concept you really want to copy is the load or balance that Carlos sets up for on his forehand. He just gets all his power by his setup and his load. And he's always setting up and loading on the back leg. So a lot of you know, historical instruction is step into the ball, step into the ball. But really, he doesn't ever look like he's stepping into the ball. He may be in this loaded position and he may step down, but he's got a beautiful balance. Whether he plays an open stance, he pushes off and explodes into the ball, or he puts his foot down and rotates into the ball. Either way, the setup is always going to be on the back leg. So when you're setting up here in the unit turn, the weight is going to be here. And if you're on the run, it's the same thing. You're going to be running, but you're going to be putting the weight down on the right leg. If you have time and space to put the foot in, you can. If not, you just load and explode. The better your balance is in the setup position, the more you can generate power and deliver that power to your contact. So the next big key to Carlos' forehand power is his contact point. And he's always well out in front, delivering body rotation and making great contact far away from his body. And like Rafael Nadal, he does have a very straight arm forehand. So he's coming in with a very straight arm, very extended. So you can play with, with what's classically called the double bend. I'm more of this position when I play my forehand, and that's okay, but you still got to get that space between your body and the contact point. If you're in here, you'll crowd, and that's a common thing with recreational players as we crowd the ball. So you have to know where that contact range is, and look how far away it is from the body here. Look how much space is between my elbow and my ribs when I make contact. So you've really got to work for that. And the key thing that you can use that will help you measure up is the extension of the left hand. So the left hand is here. Make sure that the ball is nowhere near the left hand so that the right hand goes where the left hand was. Left hand, right hand. And make sure that ball is a good racket's length away from the hand. That's going to help you feel like you can extend out through your contact and generate a lot more power. The next key component of Carlos Alcrest's forehand, which delivers so much power, is that when he's delivering the racket to the contact point, he has the intention of extending out through the ball. So all the energy he's taking into contact, he follows it out, and he has beautiful extension through the contact. Now, you could argue that the ball's already gone, 
once you get to here, and it really doesn't matter if you go here or you come here, but it's really not what you do here so much as what the intention is as you come into the ball. So if you have the intention of driving out through the ball, then that extension becomes a natural byproduct of that intention. And that's what we want to do to really drive that ball away, and then your natural extension will happen. But it's really a key part of the forehand. And really, when you, when you get out here, and he does a great job of rotating and then driving through the shoulder, he gets this extension, which is clear, because his elbow gets shoulder high on almost every forehand, and then we know he's delivering that, that movement through the shoulder to the extension point before he relaxes and goes into the wrapping phase. So the thing we want to avoid is coming in and leaving the elbow down and just playing through the shot with our forearm. We want to drive through the whole arm through, and he does a beautiful job of that on his forehand. So really try to copy that. And of course, none of this is possible if you're too tense and you have the wrong degree of tension in your swing. So we want to really measure and know exactly the kind of tension we want to have. And for those of you who watched my videos here on YouTube in the past, you know I always refer to this, this measure, this universal measurement for te grip tension, and that is you've got to feel the weight of your racket head. None of this is possible if you're tensed up. So what I feel right here is the weight of my racket head, so when my left hand releases away, I can feel the weight of the racket head. If I grip tight, the racket head disappears in the hand and locks me up all the way through my swing. If I'm soft in my hand and I can feel the weight, but I don't let the racket get out of control, now I can relax and let that racket head play through the shot. And that's how you'll actually achieve a natural lag through your shot. You'll get a natural lag through the shot by having the right lack of tension and really feeling the weight of the racket head is an easy way to remember the lack of tension you want to have in your swing, and that'll help you become more fluid and more powerful. And as a final thought on Carlos Alcaraz's forehand, it's so interesting to see that it doesn't have all those odd nuances that we see from players like Jack Sock and Akechanoff and those players that really turn the racket back and have really odd setups. So Carlos's forehand is fundamentally very, very sound and has very few odd movements in it. It doesn't really have any. No flip-flops or wibble wobbles. Uh, he does have a nice lag, a very comfortable lag, but he just holds it as he comes through. But it's a very pure stroke that's repeatable over and over again. And he's generating his power from the right sources so that he doesn't have to try to make these movements that lead to inconsistencies. So I think we're going to see Carlos have a tremendous future, obviously, with a very powerful forehand. I think we're going to see more players try to emulate the simplicity of his stroke rather than some of the complexities we've seen from other players in recent times. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson. Please give us a like, leave your comments down below, and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. And if you're looking to build your forehand into a professional quality weapon, I've got a free gift for you. Just click in the link in the description down below and gain access to my mini course on the principles you need to develop on the modern forehand to really develop your forehand into a professional quality weapon. Thanks again for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.